What you're looking at over my shoulder here is a thermal expansion tank. What this tank does is it allows for the expansion of water, essentially steam, when water heats up in my water heater. This is a necessary component of your system, especially if you have a closed system. In other words, if you have some kind of check valve on your meter, or if you have a, a pressure reducing valve, what that does is it prevents water from expanding backwards into the system, which means you have a closed system. So what will happen if your water expands when it heats, this temperature and pressure relief valve will open and then water will spray out a little bit that expanded. And if your T&P valve is not working, and if you didn't have a expansion tank, when the water heats up and it has nowhere to go, it could either cause a leak, it could damage an some of your equipment, either the water heater or a faucet or something, or it could even explode. So this is a necessary component that allows water, it's on the cold water, cold it could be anywhere in the on the system it could be anywhere all the way up to whatever valve is preventing it from going backwards so you can have an open valve between the water heater and the expansion but it must be between the water heater and whatever valve is closing like a uh, a pressure reducing valve or some kind of check valve which could be either in your meter or it could be um, installed right after the meter. Some municipalities require that. What that does is it prevents everybody else, it protects everybody else on, on the water system in case contaminated water goes back into the system. So it prevents any contaminated water. But that means that you need to have some kind of a, a uh, somewhere for that water expansion to go. And that's what this is. This is a two gallon. You can check and see whatever what your water heater is, what the size is. You might need a five gallon. Uh, mine is a 40 gallon water heater, so it only needs a two gallon expansion tank. So what it is is there's a rubber bladder in here, and it's mostly it's half it's about half filled with um, air and then half um, water. So what that does is it it just allows somewhere for that little bit of expansion to push up against that air pressure. What this is, is it's pre-installed with 40 PSI, but what you do is you, you add air to it until it's the pressure of your system. So I tested my system and it's 60 PSI, so this is about 62, just a little bit over PSI. So if you have one of these already, you can test it with any kind of um, tire gauge. So you can test it with a, some, something like a tire gauge or something. And um, if it's completely filled with water, then it's failed. In that case, you would need to shut off the water, drain your water tank at least enough so that there's no water here. And then you can take this off and replace it. They're only about, this was, I think, $25 or so. I should be, um, this should have a brace to hold this. It can either be installed um, up or down. It can be installed sideways, but that's a little dangerous in case it fills with water. Because if this breaks off, then that's just, there's nothing to stop that water from flooding um, your house and your basement. So you want to make sure that it's it's installed correctly. Vertically is a better better way to go. Uh, I would have preferred it to be pointing up, but I didn't have the space for it. Because these are flex connectors and this is the uh, solid connection here. But So if you're watching this video to wonder how to replace it, it's very easy. You just turn off the water, drain your system. Drain your water tank at least enough so that there's no water here and there's no water pressure pushing back up against it. Then you can just unscrew it off. Uh, put the new one on. You just put Teflon tape over it and then I would put pipe dope over it just to make a smooth, um, smooth turn. And then you can see that there's a spot for your wrench. So then in and, and the very last part, you just turn it just a little bit to make sure it's tight wherever it is. If you're installing a new one like I did, I installed this entire new um, water heater because I'm getting, I'm not using my boiler anymore, my boiler coil, which I've capped off. But I made sure to add, instead of cold water going straight down, I soldered this part here. So this arm is then going off, preferably to be a little bit shorter, to be honest, but I wanted it to be directly under this stud. So, and it can be really anywhere on the system. So you would just basically just, if you don't have this, then you would cut 
a spot here put the um, the unions on it preferably you would take the flex off if you have flex because you don't want any heat going down into the to these parts here that can melt so you don't want to solder right connected to that um, and then i don't know if you can see this here but this is uh this is three quarter going down to to half inch in my situation i have half inch pipes here but i could undo that if i didn't have this and then solder this connection here i have a, a part with the three quarter female threads is going down to half inch you could also go to three quarter inch whatever your system has and then that's it and then you just install that and then that prevents uh, some damage. It prevents overuse of this. If you ever notice that this keeps running, it's because you have too much water pressure. So you would look into um, reducing that pressure somehow. And at the same time, if you already have one of these, you want to make sure that it's it has um, whatever whatever your system is plus a tiny bit more. So I have about 62 psi in here. If you have much lower than that, then it's not working. And this is working. And you don't need to replace that because it's running. It just means that you have too much water pressure. So your TMP valve might be working fine. In fact, it's doing its job of releasing the pressure. But it's not dripping because it's damaged. It's dripping because you have too much water pressure. So look into that. So test your water pressure with a gauge. Figure out. Um, what water pressure, what PSI your tank is, the air in it, and uh, increase it to whatever your, to about whatever the pressure is on your system, and a small amount more. And then if you don't have one of these, install it, and then that could prevent a um, disaster. So it's required in some areas, even if it's not required. If you have a, if you have a closed system, it's a good idea to have it. Okay, there we go. So we have 40 PSI. So this is like the cheapest kind of pump. You just got to hope this thing stays in place. Even less because I let out so much air. So, so you can hear the hear it filling. Something I got on Amazon. Tire inflator gauge. It goes onto your compressor. You can leave a link on this in the description. And I'm trying to get 60, a little bit like 65 psi because a few psi is gonna come off when I take this thing off and test it and you want it a little bit over 60 anyway okay I just had to set my regulator was set too low so here we go you can hear the air going in I'm gonna 57 all right 63 This thing's reading 55, so that's no good. So I'm going to try to go a little higher in case this gauge is off. I can always easily remove some air if I had to. So let's go, go a little higher. It also could have lost a lot of PSI when I took the piece off. This has to be over 60. All right, there we go. This thing is pressurized. Put the cap back on. I'm gonna put some uh, Teflon and pipe dope on the other end and then tighten this on the, the female threads of the copper. If it leaks from there, I can always tighten it. I don't want to over tighten it. This is not supposed to open. If it does, 
when there's too much temperature or too much pressure. That's what the expansion tank is for. It's got that little bladder in it. And when it fills with water, it's only going to fill about halfway, and then the, the air will stay there. This could be either down or up or horizontal. The problem with horizontal, though, is if it fills with water, it gets very heavy and then it can snap at the threads and then that water, remember this is your cold water line, there's nothing stopping all of the water to go into your basement or your... Okay, so, hot water, pushing the air out. I have checked for any leaks in my connections anywhere. Expansion tank is up. And then when I flip that breaker on, this will be on. And these elements will start. They need to be filled with water first before I could do that. So that's why I'm filling this up right now. And most importantly, this is filled with water. I have already pre-filled this water. You cannot turn the power on when the tank is empty because these elements will burn out. So now it has water in it. So I'm going to turn it on and it's going to start right away to heat this water. Here we go. That's how you install your thermal pressure tank, whether it's a new one or you're replacing it. If you're replacing it, it's even easier. But if it's a new one, you just want to make sure you have a good uh, spot for it and install it.